and mediation. It was a productive day today, multiple six-figure settlement. This is the federal courthouse where a jury trial would have taken place. We resolved it instead. I had to make the other side see the light, litigate, do 10 rounds of briefings, and ensuring that it got to that point in time. So I'm over here at the federal courthouse for the Atlanta uh, Division, Northern District of Georgia, right in the heart of downtown Atlanta. And today I did a high level mediation and forgive any background noise here. I'm going to wear this, people think maybe I'm on the phone. I settled the case and it was a very good outcome. And generally a mediation, a third party neutral attempts to get the parties to settle through mediation, mediating. The difference between a judge mediator and some other forms of mediators is that this is the highest level of mediation in my opinion because you have an actual practicing judge who has seen and decided on cases. The mediator will talk to you privately, you and your attorney. He or she will go to the next room and talk to the defendant or the other party. The mediator will have a lot of skill and will be able to talk sense to the parties about the, lit the risks of litigation, the costs of litigation, the uncertainty of how a jury would rule. No matter how great you try to do jury instruction, you select a jury or eliminate bad jurors, at the end of the day, you never know how a jury will rule. My opinion, mediation is good in two circumstances. Number one, it can be good if it's early in the case, prior to litigation, really commencing, if you are reasonable in your approach. It is also good if you already have some smoking gun evidence, some direct evidence. Any good attorney on the other side is not going to want to take that to a trial, and they would try to get rid of it soon. But the vast majority of cases, reasonable minds differ. I may think that the case is great. You may think that the case is great. Judges may agree with me. A jury may agree with me. Another reason mediation should be considered is where you have defeated defendant's motion for summary judgment. You've gotten past all of that briefing, defendant's attempt to try to get the case dismissed and wiggle out of a jury trial or a final hearing trial by judge. That's usually when you have more leverage. And that's usually when the other side knows that they could face exposure. A third consideration is if the parties already exchange settlement offers. I do not agree to go to mediation unless I have already sent a settlement demand or offer. That at least lets me know how far apart we are, whether it's worth it for a mediator to bridge the gap. I always negotiate first. If the other side is blasé about settlement, then I'm not going to waste my client's time and dime. In a mediation, you should very carefully listen to a mediator and your attorney. Your attorney is there to advise you of the litigation risks and time. The attorney's fees and costs and rules, subpoenaing witnesses, evidentiary objections, pre-trial argument, jury selection, all of these are considerations for mediation. I am particularly fond of mediations offered through federal district courts. For example, here, Atlanta Division, they give you a free mediator that is a judge, is not the judge who is deciding your case. So everything you talk about with that judge is confidential. Imagine that kind of insight that you can get from a judge who actually sees these cases, who may have done a hundred or so mediations, an evaluative mediation. You have a mediator who evaluates your case. The mediator will usually want some kind of a statement from you. The mediator will usually review some of the pleadings and motions and dispositions and orders that have been filed in the case. The more up to speed the mediator is on the facts of the case, 
the better because then they can give you more educated advice. At a mediation, be sure that you approach it with an open mind. Otherwise, why are we at a mediation? A judge or a court can order the parties to go to mediation. He or she cannot order the parties to settle. You need to go into a mediation with an open mind. The pain and suffering that you've endured, wrongfulness of the actions, this is all valid. And you can certainly express this to the mediator during the mediation. But a part of you also has to set that aside and realize that the legal system is not perfect. No amount of money really can make you whole because it cannot go back in time to undo the damage that has been caused. So the closest approximation we have in the legal system is money. There are other non-monetary remedies, of course. But money usually is the closest approximation. I do not get into cases because I just want to win a moral victory. No good attorney wants to do that. When clients pay for their attorney's fees, they keep that in mind when it comes to the risks and costs of litigation. Another thing that you should keep in mind with a civil action is that you could be liable for a bill of costs if you lose. You're entitled to zero until you win. And that's something that you should keep in mind. As a plaintiff, the burden is on you to prove that discrimination happened if it's a discrimination case. The burden of proof is on you. You are entitled to zero dollars. Oh, but I had all of this pain and they did this to me and they ruined my life. You're entitled to zero until you win. So when you approach a mediation, you should do it with an open mind. These are considerations for mediation.